Welcome to another Wisdom Pod with Jolie Goodson. She is branding badass at Genumark, host of Branding Matters, one of uh, Canada's top 10 podcasts in the branding category, according to Feed Spots. We're going to talk about podcasting, branding, everything in between today. This podcast is brought to you by my podcasting company, podbuyer.com. If you want to start scale, be invited to pod or even find sponsors for your podcast. I specialize in monetizing podcasting. So hit me up if you want to learn from great guests like Jolie, for example, if you want to grow your network, if you want to grow, grow your net worth with a T because you get leads and clients from podcasts, podbuyer.com for that. Jolie, welcome to the pod. Can you tell me a bit more about yourself and about what you're up to nowadays? Well, thank you, Charles. First of all, thank you for inviting me to be on here. This is very nice, especially finding that you're a fellow Montrealer, right? We just found that out, which is very cool. Um, so what do you want to know? I, there's lots for me to share. You, I you... like that opening question. It challenges the brain to compact everything in less than 60 seconds about your full life and who you are. Okay, so... Back in 1960, no, I'm just kidding. So I, well, I'm the branding badass. I'm the only one out there. I actually rebranded myself, long story short, because a lot of people ask me, you know, why am I the branding badass and what is a badass, right? You get that all the time. And for me, I had some challenges that affected me both personally and professionally back in 2015. And it was a really dark time for me for various reasons. And I struggled. And then I worked really, really hard to try to get myself back. I, you know, not to get into too much detail, my career, I lost a big client. My marriage ended after 16 years. I became a single mom with two young kids, no financial support, no income, just trying to make ends meet. So it was a struggle and I worked really hard and started to see the light. And then fast forward to 2020 and what happened, right? The world changed. So it was like two steps forward, five steps back. And so I had to start over. And so I thought, now what? And, you know, you can sort of say, woe's me and fall apart, or you can pull up your socks and figure it out. So I rebranded myself the Branding Badass and started my podcast soon after that to help other people create brand awareness and help build their brands. So that's in a nutshell. <laughs> it's a good story. You did a good job with that uh, challenging uh, question there. I Thank just you. want to focus on that struggle, you know, because it happens to us every now and then. What was your mindset to get you out of that hole? My mindset was fear. <laughs> fear is a good motivator. You know, I would be I was a single mom with two young boys, like I said, and no financial support. And I didn't want to be homeless. Right. So you have to figure it out. And I had nobody to help me or support me. And so. I, and that's where I came up with badass. I actually read a book, uh, Jen Sincero wrote a book called You Are a Badass. And it's, I don't know if you've heard of it, and it's all about mindset and changing your life. And so for me, a badass is someone who takes control of their life and, you know, they're not entitled. They don't expect anybody to help them, but they do it themselves, right? They're a self-starter and everything, all the success they achieve is by themselves. And so I think I consider that to be a badass when I look, when I meet people or I see people that have come up against adversity and risen above it to me, they're a badass. And so that's sort of where I came up with the name. And it's also sort of provocative, right? Because branding is all about being a little bit provocative and standing out and differentiating yourself. And so just by calling myself the branding badass, especially on social media, just that little bit, I started getting people reaching out to me and saying, hey, badass. And, you know, and it kind of snowballed from there. But honestly, it was, Full disclosure, it was fear. I had to do something, right? I had to figure it out on my own. And relationships, they're kind of messy. You know, you can be married to someone for 25 years and the next day is, is over. Is that correct to say? Or can you like prevent and always work on your marriage to make it work in the end? Well, I, I'm no marriage expert by all means. I think that everybody's story is different. I don't think it's... You know, there's no secret to success and there's also no formula for failure. I think every situation is different. Every relationship's different. And, you know, I don't think there's one reason for why something ends or doesn't continue. So, you know, I'm, I, maybe that's too vague, but I, I can't really say why or why not a relationship doesn't last or, you know, is successful. 
I think if anything, when you, when things happen to you in life, whether it's personal or professional, I think that's when you learn a lot about yourself and hopefully you grow and become better. So then with the next relationship, you're better because of everything you learned from the past one. And losing big accounts, it happens pretty much to everyone in sales since the dawn of time. Uh, can you prevent that? Uh, and how can you not depend on such one big account is the tip here to have your eggs in many basket or? Well, that's exactly it. I think my biggest learning experience from that was don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? I mean, it was, it's a bit of a catch 22 because when you have a really big client, you tend to work really hard for that client. And so it's hard to go out and continue to get other clients because, you, you know, you want to give, I'm, I give 200% when I work with clients and it wasn't, you know, I, it wasn't that I lost them per se. It was just the economy took a deep dive in 2015 in Calgary, you know, we're an oil town and oil prices took a huge dip. And so they just froze and then they, lots of things happen. And so what I learned from that experience is, you know, now moving forward from there, it's about diversifying and making sure that you have enough that if one is more, um, is one is busier than the other, you know, you're, you're able to continue with your income because you have a bunch of them. So yeah, that's the biggest lesson is don't put all your eggs in one basket for sure. And are you fully out of that hole? And how do you deal with that um, psychologically if you're like not out of that hole for a bunch of people that struggle out there? Like, how do you deal with that psychologically? Is it about having a plan and be like, I'm 85% there and I've, I've ch I, I crunch 5% of getting there on a monthly basis since like two years and I need to be more patient? How, how do you work with that? What's the mind frame? Um, you know what? I'm not where I was in 2014. I was at the top of my game when in two, you know, I literally went from top sales in Western Canada in my company to literally, you know, not. And so I'm definitely not where I was, but I'm, but I'm also in a different place because, because of the things I've done, you know, just by rebranding myself, the branding badass, and then launching my podcast, my podcast just in itself has created so many opportunities for me as far as growing my own personal brand. And, and now I help people, not just with my podcast, but, you know, I've been invited to do speaking engagements. And so my career has sort of taken on this new journey that I never expected. Um, and it's also helped me, as you know, probably better than anyone, when you do podcasting, I'm sitting down with leaders in the industry that are come, becoming clients of mine or that are referring me. So it's a great way to network with people on a really more intimate level. You know, personally, I'm not a big small talk person. I love conversations like this when it's really one on one and you can talk about interesting things. And I'm so passionate about branding that I have these great conversations with people and then building relationships, right? And sales is about building relationships. So I can't think of a better way to build relationships than what I'm doing. So it's different. It's, you know, if we're looking just as far as dollar amounts go, maybe in my income, what I was making then isn't the same, but knowing what I know now, I wouldn't change it because I love where things are at today. Another tip for the audience when they're in the struggle, what me worked time after time again, you know, I have dogs right now and the, the tip is dogs love a routine, you know, they love a schedule. Uh, I don't think humans are any different. We, we need some kind of schedule and we need to introduce positive stuff in there. And for me, it was sports, you know, high intensity training and giving my body some kind of reset time because if you don't do, plan that in your day, your sleep will be affected. Your sleep's affected, your mental performances and so forth. And your thoughts, the quality of your thoughts is way lower. Your energy is lower. So sometimes when the shit hits a fan like that, maybe plan it a bit of time or go for a run or something. And me personally, it, it, has, it has helped me countless of times when uh, fires were burning in my businesses. And I think the morale of the story is that you always go where your mind goes, you know, it's like when you look at a point and you're in your car, you know, you, you go there, even if you're turning and if you're looking, that's what they recommend in driving school. Well, I think it's the same in, in life. If you think your life will go to shit and you will become homeless, that's exactly what will happen. If you keep on brainwashing yourself. And yes, I use the word brainwash here. 
I think sooner or later you you reach that point and that objective. You need to, to be obsessed with that objective and only have that in mind. Okay. <laughs> Was there a question there? No, uh, oh. it's a conversation. So oh, you yeah, can yeah, comment yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, yes, I agree with you. I think if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm getting from what you're saying is if you put yourself in that position, you know, that whole mindset thing where you see yourself, whether whatever that is, whatever your goal is, see yourself in that life. Like, this is what I want and this is how I'm going to get there. And I can see myself, I think doing that is a huge part of success. You know, I mean, I, when I say homeless and I don't take that serious, I don't, Take, I don't joke about that because I know it's a serious issue, but I guess the fear inside of me is what was the driving force that kept me going, that kept me, you know, working hard and trying different things to figure it out. So I never saw myself as a failure. I never saw myself. But with that said, my self-esteem took a huge dive. I'll be honest with you. You know, it was really tough. It, it can't, it, how can it not? You know, you're at one day you're on top of the world and the next day you're in this deep hole and you're like, how did I get here? And what am I going to do? And, you know, I'm human, like all of us doing the best that we can. So it was definitely hard, but I always kept my eye on the ball, as they say, and knew I had to get there and I'm re- got very focused and figured it out. So yeah, mindset is um... The podcast, I mean, most of the people wouldn't think of a podcast to get themselves out of a hole because it's more of a mid long term thing. Why did you decide to start your pod and and then what was your what were your objectives with with the pod? Well, that's interesting that you say that because when I started my podcast, it was January 1st, 2021, which was my launch date. And honestly, that I, my mission was not to make money doing my podcast or career or get me out of my hole. Honestly, my purpose for starting my podcast was very simple. I had, long story short, I had done a presentation to a bunch of women. It was this networking group online. So it was September of 2020. So Um, It was supposed to be in person. And then because we were all in lockdown, they asked me to do it online and I did it. And then afterwards, I had a few of the women reach out to me and say, hey, you know, and it was the same story. I was working for a corporate company. I got laid off because of COVID. I started my own business and I love what, because my presentation was about branding because my background is marketing, advertising, branding. I love what you had to say in your presentation. I know nothing about branding. Can you help me? And I had, you know, like I said, various people reach out to me. And so I, they're like, do you do consulting? And I hadn't done consulting because I was just so focused on like, I got to grow, get my business back, you know, with, I help clients build their brand with merch. And so I literally just said to my boyfriend afterwards, I said, I told him what happened and he listens to soccer podcasts all the time. And he just said, oh, you should start a podcast. And I was like, laughed it off. And, you know, I'm one of those people. I, I say, yes, I take risks. And I was like, okay, maybe I will. You know, and then I thought, okay, COVID is a global issue. Forced entrepreneurship is a global problem. There's a lot of people out there that are starting their own businesses and they don't really understand what it means to build a brand. And so I came up with the name Branding Matters. It's the double double entendre, as they say, because it's all things to do with branding. So everything from brand identity to your brand voice, to logos, to design, to branding matters. If you're starting a business, you really need to figure out what your brand is and what your brand voice is. And then I thought, okay, I know what I know, but I know what I don't know. So I'll bring on leaders from all over the world, from all different industries to share their story and valuable tips and help my audience build their brands. And that was it. I, you know, I didn't, my girlfriend even asked me, she goes, how are you going to monetize? I'm like, what do you mean monetize? I'm just doing it because I want to help people, you know, and I'm so passionate about branding and I'm passionate about helping people. And just by doing that, it's really taken on a life of its own. And now I have a sponsor and it's kind of, you know, I don't know where it's going to go. It, like I said, it's opened up now. I'm doing speaking engagements. But my my purpose was not to make money. It was just to help people. That's also why I started this pod. You know, oddly enough, I felt I wasn't contributing enough. And because, you know, the Tony Robbins uh, Life Areas contribution, and I started it. Then the second thing that hooked me up was the fact that I could hyper learn interviewing 15 CEOs a day. And then I added the capitalists back into it this year, my podcast agency, the sponsors and so forth. So it's quite fascinating sometimes the risks that we take 
without necessarily knowing where it will lead. I call it the experimental mindset and see yeah. where you are today, top 10 in, in Canada. I want to ask you, um, my branding, what does my brand feel like to you? Your brand, your personal brand, your business brand? I think it's pretty much all the same, but yeah. And I mean, no, because the companies are companies, right? With their logos, but they all have some Charles in it. So let's start with the, the personal brand. Yeah. Well, you know what, Charles? I mean, I would love to give you an answer, but I, I feel I'm not um, equipped right now to be totally honest with you, to tell you that because I don't know enough about your brand. I don't know enough about your business. When I sit down with clients, I ask a million questions. You know, I, I need to learn. I mean, if you and I were to sit down, I would go through, I have a list of questions that I ask people and, you know, it's not as simple as just meeting someone and, and saying after five minutes, what's my brand? Because it's a lot deeper than that. Because at the end of the day, your brand is how people feel about you. So how do I feel about you? I don't know. I'm still feeling you out. You know, I had a guest on my show and we talked about branding and marketing and the difference between the two. And it's really important. And I think it's very apropos here because branding, you know, we were talking about it and branding is um, or marketing is dating and branding is proposing. Right. Because branding is all about inspiring someone to fall in love with your brand. So there's way more of emotional connection. So, I mean, I'm happy to answer that once I get to know you a bit better. But right now, I don't know. I'm still figuring out what your brand is. And and the reason I say that, because I think it's really important. And, and a lot of entrepreneurs have this challenge is they want to have a strong brand right away. And it takes time. Nike didn't become Nike overnight. You know, Apple didn't become Apple overnight. It took years and years of people learning about who they are, following, finding, learning how to trust them, you know, figuring out their values and all those kind of things. And so that's why building a brand is takes a long time. It takes a lot of thought. And um, yeah, so sorry, it may not be the answer you want, but I'm just being honest. Right. What are your top three goals for the rest of this year? There's three months remaining to the year. My top three goals for the rest of the year, business-wise or personally? Aren't they the same? No, I don't think so. If I were to if I were to think business-wise, I think my top three goals business-wise is to um reach a certain level financially, which I don't really feel comfortable sharing, but I have the number written down. So my goal is to reach that number. And then personally, I think my goal is to try to get back to Montreal because my family's there and I don't get back enough. So I'm working on spending time back there with my mom, who's ninety, going to be 94. So two different goals, but they're both very important to me. Yeah, very important. And I want to ask for the podcast itself. Do you have any goals with that one? Yes, I'm number three on the top 10 list and I want to get to number one. <laughs> In the branding so, category, that is. or Yeah, so Feedspot is a platform that celebrates all different mediums and podcasts is one of them. And so, in, and then they break it down to different categories, just like with Good Pods is another one. I'm on the Good Pods list. But for Feedspot, uh, they have a list of the 10 best branding podcasts in Canada. And so currently I'm at number three. I started off number 19, then went up to number five. Now I'm number three. So my goal is to get to number one. I don't know if it'll happen by the end of this year, but we'll see. Let's hope for it. Where can people <laughs> find out more about you? Uh, well, I'm the only branding badass out there. So if you just go on any of the social channels, whether it's Instagram, you can find me. I'm on LinkedIn as well under Jolie Goodson, J-O-E-L-L-Y Goodson. And um, those are the two that I really are my biggest social platforms. And I am and then, oh, sorry. And then, of course, my podcast. Check out Branding Matters. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you like my t-shirt, I actually sell these on my website, brandingmatters.ca. I had, I started a few just when I wanted to promote my podcast. And then every time I wore them, people started asking me where they, where I could, where they could get one. So I start selling them on my website now. So it's brandingmatters.ca. Very cool. I'm Charles Cormier-Holes. That was another Wisdom Podcast with Jolie Goodson.